Hey everybody, so as you saw in that teaser video, um, this is going to be a very large unboxing uh, for Hunter's Lodge, and I'm probably going to split this up into multiple parts, as you can tell in that promo, there's a, or not promo, but I guess you'd call it a promo, there's at least three boxes here. Um, so I guess I need to lay out real quick what I bought from Hunter's Lodge. So what's contained within this box is another VZ-52 barreled action. There are also two Spanish FR-8 uh, rifles. There are also two uh, SKS's. One is a Romanian SKS. One is a, quote, Chinese paratrooper SKS, which we all know there were never really any Chinese paratrooper SKSs that were actually ever issued to the Chinese military, you know, that's at least been imported anyway. These are some ones that were actually cut down. They actually did a pretty decent job of them when they did them. It's just kind of a novelty collector thing. And then what you're also going to see are two revolvers, one being a Smith & Wesson Victory revolver chambered in 38 Smith & Wesson. And there is also an infilled revolver that is, once again, chambered in 38 Smith & Wesson. Now, a little bit of background. Um, well, I'll get into the background later. Um, just suffice it to say is this is, this. I spent a lot of money. <laughs> More than uh, I, I'm going to probably tell you at this point in the video. Um, but without further ado, what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to make this probably a multi-part unboxing. And what I'm going to get to work doing is actually separating these boxes out. Um, as you saw, these are three, uh, I guess you'd call them rifle boxes that have been taped together. I was kind of surprised they did this. I'm surprised they didn't split the order up, but um, you know, that's fine. I mean, if they want to ship it all together, it's just going to be a little hard to kind of unbox, I guess you could say. I'm trying to get it at a logical split point where I'm not cutting into the boxes so much. So I did want to take my time on this and obviously you guys know I am generating uh, content in doing this. So that's one of the other reasons for me splitting it up. Because if I did all this in one video, you're probably talking at least an hour. So let me get this box flipped on its side so I can separate it. And just for grins, hmm, the real question is, is which box do I start with? Because this is the shortest box. I'm going to start with the shortest box just, just because I have no clue. Actually, I actually have no clue how these are separated out. I don't know what's in what. I mean, I honestly, really and truly do not know. Um, it's going to be real fun getting all this tape off here. Cause they taped it very, very well. I mean, <laughs> a box cutter or something is essential to getting in these boxes. <laughs> something very sharp. There's just loads and loads of tape. Looks like I've actually got an end open here. Oh wow. Well this is cool. Alright, so for starters, it looks like we're starting off with, uh, looks like we're actually starting off here with a uh, VZ-52 barreled action. It looks like one of my revolvers. That looks like the other revolver. Sweet. It's a cool way to start. I'm pretty, pretty pleased with that, actually. Of course, I have no idea what is in the bottom of this box. It feels like just paper, but I better be careful. Let me pause it real quick. I'll come right back. I want to check this. All right, 
everybody. Uh, so here we're back. I got the box out of the way. There was actually nothing in the bottom of the box. Just a whole bunch of shredded, uh, I don't even know, shredded papers of some, some sort. Um, I would assume probably magazines, whatnot, just stuff for extra padding. Looks like this has been packed fairly well. I mean, there was absolutely no damage to the boxes. Um, now I did special request from James on this one. I said, hey, you know, whatever VZ52 barrel to action to take out for me. Um, I said, if you can make sure that it's got a, an upper hand guard with it, I said, I'll be tickled to death. I said, because, you know, those are pretty hard to find. You know, additionally, also harder to find, probably, much more harder to find, are um, stocks, which I, I was thankfully very, very fortunate to score a stock. Um, or score two stocks actually from Apex. Of course, these are project stocks. These are the ones that um, these are the ones that CAI decided they wanted to bedliner some of them as well as you know epoxy epoxy them to try to fix them. And oh my goodness, you guys may not be able to see this. There are two hand guards in here. Now I don't for you guys watching. Uh, you go out to blast from the past, you'll, get, you'll find out real quick how much a handguard is going to cost for a VZ-52 barreled action. Um, they are extremely expensive. They are not cheap. Um, I did buy one from him. Actually, a really nice one. Of course, I spent, I think it was $159 for it. Uh, just because he had them at the time, and at the time when I placed this order with James, I didn't know if I was going to get another another handguard so I was like crap I'm gonna jump on that I'm gonna get an extra handguard just in case wow I can't believe there are two handguards in here I'm trying to be careful not to cut up my wood here looks like this one's been oiled up pretty good I imagine he probably had to uh, Probably had to assemble this from a few parts in order to make it as complete as possible. I did request that. I said, hey, as complete as possible. Um, oh, wow. Look at that. There's even a cleaning rod and a bore brush right there. That's freaking cool. I have yet to see any of those coming with a VZ-52 barreled action. Wow. I gotta, I gotta be honest, I am pleasantly impressed and surprised so far. If I can just get all this tape off here, which I, I get why I taped it, you know, for everything to stay in place. Wow. Check that out. It's kind of cool. Uh, I don't I don't know what other pieces go with this, but this is what he had. You know, I'm thankful for anything I can get, to be honest. Um, you know, and, and honestly, guys, if, if you order from them and you expect to have something that is a safe queen, uh, then you have seriously raised your expectations entirely too high. A lot of you guys... Or not a lot of you guys, um, or a lot of people think that you know it's not it's not worth it. But you know, why don't you just buy a really nice rifle? Sorry, if you hear me getting choked up a little bit, it's because it's because of this oil. <laughs> it's got a little bit of a I don't know strange. Well, it's not strange. It's got it's it's a little strong, um, almost like almost like hops number nine, like a some sort of maybe degreaser. I'm not sure, but anyway. Um, I got a pretty sensitive sense of smell, so um, stuff like this, <laughs> for whatever reason, chokes me up. Just trying to get all this tape off of here so I can get this first handguard off to show you guys. All right. So here's our first handguard. It does have a split in it, but that's okay. This You can buy a new piece of wood. It's these metal pieces that are extremely hard to come by. Believe it or not, this one is in really good shape. I mean, that's pretty freaking nice. As a matter of fact, 
Guys, that crack doesn't even go all the way through. You could probably fill this with some wood glue and it would probably strengthen it enough. Beautiful handguard. That right there, folks, is you know a hundred plus dollar value. Just that handguard. But as with any of the American infomercials, but wait, there's more. Of course not one, but two handguards. Or two upper handguards, or whatever you want to call them. I guess they'd be a handguard. Alright, let's see. Let's get that tape off here. And yes, you guys don't see me with gloves today. Um, I was hoping that whatever I grabbed first wouldn't be slathered in grease. It's just got some oil on it, which is fine. That's not a big deal. Alright, so here's our second hand guard. This one looks a little bit different from the first. Um, once again, no major... Actually, let's start from the middle. No major... Well, it does have a crack on the back, but no major dents. Um, there's a little scratch right there. Could, be, could have been for me. I don't know. Let's look at the underside. Of course, that crack does go all the way through. But once again, you can replace this wood. Uh, there's a guy out there... Um, I think he's on Gunbroker out from Pennsylvania that makes replacement wood pieces like this. He used to do replacement stocks. I don't know if he does those anymore. Um, but anyway, so think about this for a second. Two VZ52 upper handguards. Now what's the retail? Go out to Blast from the Past and check his site out. You'll see. You know what they are. They're at least bare minimum $125. So you're talking I'd venture to say $250 worth of handguards right here. One of which doesn't have a, or has a crack that doesn't go all the way through. The other which does have a crack and goes all the way through. But the metal is in excellent shape because a lot of times these are pitted, they're beat up, they're just tore all to pieces. And these look very good. So, super happy about that. All right. So, James did tell me he was gonna try to make this as complete as possible. Uh, most my first VZ52 did not come with a magazine, but he told me he would try to get me a magazine with this one. It looks like this one might be a little hung up, a little froze up in there. Not sure what's going on there. Something's got it hung up, but that's okay. The magazine, with the exception of a little bit of pitting right there, it's actually doing quite good. So, anyway, of course, here is that VZ52. It's okay, so this is 67329. Let's see how much of it matches. Oh, yeah, total, total mix master. But that's okay. You've got all your major components. Um, Everything appears to be here. The only thing that's missing, of course, and I've not looked yet in this bag, would be like the, the hardware with which to um, take and uh, basically secure this into the stock. Um, oh, one thing I just noticed. Looks like our front sight got broken off. He might have thrown another sight in there. I don't know. Um, let's find out. Let's see what the deal is. Um, finally got that cover off. Uh, so here's your recoil spring. I might be missing part of that. I can't remember. I've looked at so many guns it's it's really easy to get confused as far as where you're at and you know what does or what has what and I don't know. I can just get this bolt out now. Actually, should probably let's say this latch comes off. For whatever reason, I'm having trouble getting my bolt out.
carrier rather. strong rifling actually I'm going to insert a picture top left um, but I'm going to pause this while I'm doing this um, to figure out what's going on with this, with this bolt carrier I don't know what my, well you know what I'll probably look at it later it appears as though it appears as though it's just a carrier I'm actually missing the bolt but once again, the bolt could be in this bag. So, anyway, sorry. I'm getting sidetracked. Let me just show you what the rifle looks like. Of course, once again, it's missing that front sight. It's got your op rod, pretty much, what I like to call it. There it is. It's a 1956 AYM. Of course, probably nothing is going to match on this rifle which is perfectly okay with me. You know, I will, of course, headspace check this. So there's that. But let's find out what he put in this bag. I have no idea what this could be. Looks like stock parts, possibly. Okay, that's interesting. Hmm, this actually looks like SKS parts. There's one screw, <laughs> there's the uh, butt plate. That looks like the safety on an SKS. Of course, sling, sling swivel. What on earth is in here? He always throws in extra parts, especially gas for Oh, he threw in a pair of grips for one of those revolvers. Cool, which actually looked pretty decent. A little bit of a ding there but no splits. It's pretty neat. So let me get these SKS parts aside. Let me get um, let me get this set aside. I don't know what, like I said, I don't know what's going on with that magazine. Um, oh, there's the other box screw, or Butt plate screw. Cool. Um, I really don't know what's going on with this thing. A um, couple things I got to figure out. Obviously, you know, I don't, I don't profess to know everything about these rifles, nor do I. You can tell that from me fumbling around on camera. So you guys are getting a little bit of entertainment at my expense. Let me move this up. I know what this is. But let me set it aside. Let's go to these pistols. Now, if you guys have seen any of the Wolf Hunters uh, videos, uh, I, I basically, um, you know, I would encourage you guys to go out, go out and check out his channel. He is one of the few people that gets revolvers from Hunter's Lodge. He's actually pretty good at what he does. I don't know much about revolvers, you know, as far as the timing and fitting barrels and this and that. It's, you know, I just, I, I don't know. Um, I've never really taken the time to learn, which doesn't mean I, you know, can't learn. So let's check this out. So 
here is our Smith & Wesson. I don't know why it has a 76 paint mark on it. You can see um, 38. I'm trying to make out the writing because these were spray painted it appears. It's got Smith & Wesson on there. Actually it's pretty tight. You guys can see it is unloaded. 65012. I wonder if that number matches. Probably not. Doesn't appear that it does, but it's pretty tight. Um, looks like we're missing some screws here on this side plate. But it appears as though it functions. Once again, this is chambered in 38 Smith & Wesson. That's really cool, actually. You know, just a grimy, grungy looking, looking uh, revolver. Looks like it's kind of been piecemealed together. But, once again, for an old revolver, that's not too bad. Pretty cool. Front sight's intact. That's just cool. Really cool. I like it. Let me set that aside. I think these grips... Yeah, these grips he sent me are actually for this pistol. So that's gonna that's gonna pair up real nice. Thanks, James. I did ask for something that wouldn't require a whole ton of gunsmithing since um, pistols and well revolvers in particular are not my forte. Let's check out this other revolver. This should be the Enfield. I have no clue what this is going to look like. Wow. This is crazy. Okay, so we're missing a front sight right off of that. It does look like the grips are still here. Look at that. Look at how you cock this. That's really cool. I don't even know what I'm doing. Wow. I guess this is the, yeah, this is the break it open. Maybe? I don't know. Or maybe it's only double action. Of course, guys, these are always shipped unloaded. You can tell there are no rounds in here. You know, just a little FYI. This is a very interesting revolver. Looks good. It's not super tight. You know, as you can see, it's a top break. Oh, yeah, I forget. Now I remember. Oh, I thought I remembered. Oh, there we go. With the ejector. Covered in a lot of grease. Might need a little bit of work. I don't know. But very cool nonetheless. I mean, it's pretty neat. Okay, so it looks like the grips are busted just a little bit on the bottom. Is it going to stop it from functioning? Nope. It's just not going to be super pretty. That's a cool looking revolver. Really neat looking. Um, grab a napkin here quick. If I can see what's here. I don't even know what's on there. Whole bunch of numbers. But this is a really odd pistol. Really odd. I mean, 
really quick actually that's crazy of course missing a front sight of course caliber 38 I'm assuming that 41 might mean this was made in 1941 um, BMP there's a DI and a star I'll put some pictures in here on this I have no I don't know much about these I, mean, I really don't so guys chime in on the comments uh, this is especially some of my uh, some of my British viewers or Aussies you know whoever's watching um, this is a really interesting revolver should be chambered in 38 Smith and Wesson um, but this should be that infield revolver yes I know you guys saw that kinda looks like there's a little bit of bulge here but it's not on the other side it's just the way it's made it's okay that's pretty cool that is a that's a really strange revolver I've never seen one like this um, but once again I don't really delve into revolvers much um, but anyway I guess you could say this is probably gonna be all of uh, part one of this unboxing between uh, let's see between the two revolvers uh, Smith & Wesson, what I believe to be a Smith & Wesson Victory revolver, as well as a Enfield um, 38 Smith & Wesson revolver. It's pretty cool to see both of these, um, as well as my VZ-52 barreled action, and oh, by the way, some very nice VZ-52 handguards. One of which has a crack that goes all the way through, the other one only goes halfway through, and cleaning rod and brush. I don't know if there was more that was supposed to be with this. My, pro, there were probably supposed to be more pieces, I would assume, because this is so long. But anyway, um, still pretty cool to get it nonetheless. Oh, and part of my SKS parts. I guess, you know, we're already running a little long on this video. I might as well make it a little longer. Why not? Let's see what's in here. Let's go ahead and open this up. Holy crap. I'm glad I did this is crazy oh my goodness so you guys have got to see this James put in a lot of parts there is another op rod there is an oil bottle likely for the VZ-52 There is some other sort of bottle. I don't even know what that is. But that's really freaking cool. Looks like your looks like your cleaning rod screws into that. Anybody know what it is? Let me know. Pretty neat. Um, oops. Looks like part of the butt plate screws for that VZ-52. Another top cover for the VZ-52. I guess that was a cleaning rag that was shoved off in there originally. Um, stock bolt? For something? I don't know what that's for. So let me lay this out here. God, look, so much stuff in here. I mean, this these parts are not cheap. I know they're not cheap. You guys know they're not cheap. Especially those of you that delved in PZ-52s. There's another bolt carrier. There is a bayonet. Um, I guess it's the bayonet assembly. That's what it looks like. For that fold-out bayonet. There appears to be a fully populated bolt for the VZ-52, so I have a bolt now. Of course, once again, butt plate screws, which for whatever reason are very hard to find for the VZ-52. I don't know if James remembered that I had two of these. You know, these aren't all the same, but they're pretty close. Another trigger guard. Um, oh, 
Now these are expensive. Front side protector, these little jokers will run you about 40 bucks a piece. Um, nose cap for your for your stock. Um, once again, actually, I don't know what that's for. This, I think, is yeah, that's the that's the um, I guess that's a locking not not really a locking block, but the lug for uh, for the stock. You can see it, and more parts of the uh, of the bayonet. Another thread protector, another screw uh, for fixing it into the stock, much like this one. I didn't have this for my other one. Um, wow, this is just nuts. So as you can see, he threw in all these extra parts as well. Whether I need them, whether I don't, you know, it. it I, I don't know. It's pretty freaking cool. But I have a whole nother. Um, top cover, whole nother bolt carrier, of course the sweet bolt assembly which actually has the firing pin, the spring and everything else in there because all of those parts are super expensive because they're hard to find. There we have it. So this is part one. This is of course, you know, the VZ-52. All the extra goodie bag. I don't have a clue what that is. That's driving me nuts. Um, or this. Um, as well as two beautiful hand guards, as well as part of a cleaning kit, as well as VZ-52 mags, as well as the two revolvers, the Enfield and the Smith & Wesson Victory. Really cool stuff. I'm super happy about this. So, we're going to end this video here because this is extremely long. Um, I may break this up into four parts. I don't even know yet. There's so much stuff to go through. Um, but stay tuned. Make sure you guys hit that bell notification. Sign up for notifications so that as soon as I put this video out, or put any video out rather, you, know, you guys will get notified. You can jump on it. Sometimes I put some deals that I found out there. Um, and time is of the essence on them, like back in the past with those uh, K31 clip or magazines. Um, so that way, anytime I find something, I try to pass it along to you guys. Of course, anytime I do an unboxing, I want to show you. I want to show you, you know, your mileage may, may vary, but at least get a general idea of what you can expect, what you're going to get. Um, and as always, talk to James. Tell him what you're looking for. Tell him if you're needing extra parts or include as many parts as possible. Tell him if you want to find something that's got a good bore. You know, there's all kinds of requests you can make, and he typically tries to honor it. Now, yes, shipping does take a long time, but you got to understand, they don't have a whole lot of people working there. This is not a big operation. I've actually driven by the place before, uh, I think last year sometime, and it's a very small place. Um, and I think you really only have about two or three people doing all the work. So I know you guys get frustrated sometimes when, you know, they take forever, or you seem, seems like they take forever, but they've got a, they've got a lot of stuff to handle, and, you know, I guess they do the best they can, um, you know, with what they got. So, just want to thank all my subscribers, everybody, for your likes, your comments, your shares. It certainly helps out the algorithm, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, for, I guess you could call it this episode of uh, unboxings from Hunter's Lodge. Stay tuned for the next one. More content coming your way. And of course, eventually I will get around to cleaning these up, really going over them thoroughly so that you guys can see all the neat little engravings and everything else about these things um, and hopefully have a little bit more insight. Maybe I'll be a little bit better prepared next time when I run into things like this um, and like this. <laughs> so anyway thanks everybody for watching until next time you guys have an awesome day